you know, one of the challenges um, with, with growing up, and, and, and even the history of school and education reform, is hard work isn't fun, you know? It, it's a lot like work. Well, the fact is, you have to grow that capacity for hard work. And I would even say it, it needs to become the language around the building. We think that the path to grit is deliberate practice. And deliberate practice is a, is a very special way to get things to, to grow. And, and it means that you work at the edge of your ability, right at that the gut skin moment where you're just beyond your ability. You're coached, um, so someone is giving you feedback and then you try again. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. Grit is having stamina. Grit is sticking with your future, day in, day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. I guess what's so appealing about grit is that it seems so malleable. It seems like the thing that is best able to be manipulated and, and, and changed and grown. So I guess to me the, the ultimate surprise is just how effective grit is as a predictor of success. The real key to it is forming relationships with young people sufficiently that you know what they're working on and what they'll work for, what their passions are, and, and getting them to, to work that passion so that it gets them where they want to be, which then can transfer to school. And, and this wanders into another question, but I think it's a good segue. Um, if the teacher has a coaching relationship with the student, you have a much greater likelihood of the student working. The language that you want the students to generate is, tell me how to get better. What can I do here to get better? The new language is, um, you haven't achieved it yet. The, the magic of the word yet. You know, I'm not a good test taker yet. Simply adding that three-letter word can have an enormous impact, and especially if it becomes the language in the building, where everywhere the kid turns, they hear yet. It's very powerful and quite simple. And, and, and so that's what the, the zap room people need to know. They need to know how to be, and I, I know I'm repeating myself, but how to be a better coach. Here I am, a 60-something, who joined the lab, um, after 37 years in education, in public education, and um, it was a unique role. And part of it was that I would bring insight from education rather than just being another academic. So my purpose here was to be the grounded individual who knew what it was like truly in schools. But also I'm often writing the language to get it to be more uh, young people friendly. Also, the joke at the lab is that I'm Angela's doppelganger. This is a joke because she's a 42-year-old Asian woman and I'm not that. But I, I often stand in for her for talks and such because I know her material quite well. And Angela's been studying uh, West Point cadets for 10 years now. Um, and, you know, West Pointers arrive pretty gritty. <laughs> My research team and I went to West Point Military Academy. We tried to predict which cadets would stay in military training and which would drop out. We went to the National Spelling Bee and tried to predict which children would advance farthest in competition. We studied rookie teachers working in really tough neighborhoods, asking which teachers are still going to be here in teaching by the end of the school year. And of those, who will be the most effective at improving learning outcomes for their students. We partnered with private companies asking, which of these salespeople is going to keep their jobs? And who's going to earn the most money? In all those very different contexts, one characteristic emerged as a significant predictor of success. And it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks, physical health, and it wasn't IQ. It was grit. I think empowering an eighth grader is what it's all about, to, to give them a sense that they have some, some say in their own destiny and that their possibilities um, 
are endless and that they have more power than they think they do. You know, they think they have the power of no, but they also have the power of yes. And that goes right to the point of growth mindset. And you know, frankly, for some kids, especially for those who don't do well, school is really unpleasant. But it's also setting stretch goals. And, and, and that's another term that I would maybe use to inhabit some of the teacher language. You know, everyone can stretch, even the top of the class. You know, so even if you are getting perfect tests and all of your homework's in, there's another way that you can stretch. You can take it a step further so that everyone should be talking about stretch goals. But what is that next harder effort? I, I also buy into this idea of teacher as counselor. I would suggest that the teachers create discussion groups um, in which they support each other for their own desires, their own personal growth and then learn how to translate that to the students. So certainly a big part of the mission is to help individuals and, and schools and teachers and, and others to achieve their highest possible potential.